Hello everybody, I'm Nick and as part of my ASP.NET Core REST API series, I've implemented JWT authentication, so login and registration. In this video, I want to talk about another topic we're going to cover in the future video, or if you are from the future, in a video I will link now in the top right corner of your video, and that is refresh tokens. And the concept is very simple, I don't want you to be intimidated, it will actually be a fairly short video because it's very easy to explain, but many people don't know about it, so I wanted to talk about it. So currently what we have is, we have our web app or mobile app, depending on what you're going to choose to go with. Currently, we're just emulating this using Swagger. And um, in order to register or login, we use the username and password to the author API. They have two endpoints, a login and the register, and we get back a JWT as a response. And what we do is we're going to store this JWT locally, and we're going to be using it on every call to, my, to our main API, the main application API. However, the JWT expires. And the problem with expiring is that, of course, you're gonna need to get a new one. So what do we do? Okay, if it expires, we show a page to the user, please log in again because your login expired. They're gonna put this here, go back, we're gonna get the JWT, store it in here and use it on every request. You can understand, however, that this is very bad user experience. We don't wanna do this every single time. And that's because, I mean, come on, it's tedious. Nobody wants to do that. Facebook doesn't ask you to log in every five minutes, and why is that? Well, the answer is very simple, refresh tokens. What we're gonna do instead of just issuing in JWT every time we log in here, is we're also gonna issue something called a refresh token. And a refresh token can be anything you want as long as it's unique. In my case, it will be a good, but you can choose whatever you want. This refresh token will be taken from the mobile or web app as normal as the JWT, and they will be stored in the local storage of the application. However, a main difference between the JWT and the refresh token is that the JWT expires in let's say 5 to 10 minutes, while the refresh token can be there for like 6 to 12 months if you want to. And the reason for that is, if somebody was to attack this part of our workflow with a man in the middle attack and get the JWT, well, the JWT is short-lived, they don't know what's the refresh token, so they only have access to this API for 5 minutes. And realistically, it will be way less than five minutes. So we're pretty safe from that standpoint. Now, how do we use our refresh token? Well, we would have another endpoint here, and this would be the refresh endpoint. And our user would use this refresh endpoint. Let's put this here. So this is the refresh workflow. And again, we would use the expired Expired JWT with a refresh token. And the server will validate that this is a valid JWT that has expired and that we have in our database for the server a refresh token with this refresh token ID. So this is the DB of the auth API. And if these two matched, then they would simply go back to the user with a new JWT and a new refresh token because we know that we issued this combination. This is signed, this is valid in our database, and that's fine, you get a, a new combination of JWT and refresh token back. Something very important is that the refresh token can actually get invalidated if we want to because we store it here. So let's say if we have a data breach, we can invalidate every refresh token and the user won't be able to refresh automatically. So he will be prompted to log in again. Another scenario is if the user changes their password, you would also want to invalidate every refresh token because you'd want them to re-log in into the API. From a client standpoint, the way to implement this is very simple. You would have a middleware that every time you're about to launch a request to the main application, you check the expiry date of your JWT. And if it's in the past, you take the refresh token from the local storage and this JWT, you go to this API, the auth API get a new combo back and use that. So it's fully transparent to the user. You have to write all your code into the client and that's it. So as you can see, it's a very basic, very simple concept to understand. And we're gonna see how we're gonna implement that in the next video. So please follow my REST API series for more content like this. Leave a like if you like and subscribe. And I'm gonna see you in the next video. Keep coding.